Hello there my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina at CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this two colour unisex macrame bracelet. Now you can achieve many different looks depending on the materials and colours you choose to put together and if you're interested the specific ones I made in this tutorial are available for sale in my shop where I also sell other jewelry kits and tutorials. You can find the link in the description box down below otherwise if you want to learn how to make one for yourself or someone else then keep watching. So these are the materials that we'll need. Now first of all we need our cord and I'm using a 1.5mm leather cord in two different colours. Now you can use different sizes and even other kinds of cords as well. It completely depends on the look that you want. And then I'm going to be using a shank button for the closure so just make sure that the one you're using has a large enough loop to take two lengths of your cord through. We of course need a pair of scissors to cut a cord with and lastly also some glue to help finish off the ends. Then we need to cut some lengths of our cord and I have two lengths here of about one meter and 60 centimeters each and these are going to be our working cords and of course I have one of each colour. Then we also need another length of one of the cords of about 70 centimetres. So this is going to be the holding cord. Now you can choose whichever colour you want to. I personally prefer to choose the darker one. I think that looks the best. So I'm going to start out grabbing my short length of cord here. Now if you want to you can work on something like a macrame board. It might be helpful. But I'm just going to do it freehand. So what I'm going to do is take my short length here and put the two ends together. Because we need to find where the midpoint is. And just bring it all the way up. So we have a little loop here and this is also now going to be a loop for the clasp. So holding on to this loop here I'm then going to grab my long cords just one at a time and then start towards one end and then I just want to kind of bend the end over and create a little loop with that as well. Keep hold of that, take the other one, do the same thing, just create that little loop on one end so we still have a long length to work with. Then I'm taking one loop here placing it on top of the holding cord then I'm going to take the other loop come down through that behind the holding cords out to the side and just keep hold of everything in the middle there and then we just want to bring these two in my case the black cords the original ones we did down through that second loop here all the way and then grab hold of the ends including that short little one same on the other side grab hold of the ends and then just pull them tight and they are going to create this square knot around the holding cord and basically now hold everything in place. So this is just going to be a temporary starting point for now so we actually get something more stable to work with and also just making sure that the short ends here are at the top so up towards the loop. So we have these long ends coming downwards that we're going to be working with and making our macrame with. So the way we're going to do this is kind of start on one side at a time. So I've got my two holding cords just kind of separate them out so I then bring, it doesn't matter what side you start on, I'm just going to start on the left here, bring that underneath the first holding cord so the holding cord on the same side then back over the top and down through the loop of itself on the outside there and pull the cord all the way through so it looks something like that you can see the working cord on the left here loops around the holding cord on the left and I'm then going to take this loop and then flip it upside down so I'm grabbing the side of it here and then flipping it towards me and then on the other side I'm going to make sure that that loop that I just held on to I'm laying that over the top of the right holding cord and then I'm going to grab the other length here which in my case is the pink one and then we need to go down through this loop that we're holding over the top of the holding cord but we also need to make sure we go on the inside of that holding cord so basically down between the two holding cords so put the end down through and then also make sure you put your fingers down through the large loop that we have on the outside here created by this cord itself and pull it back out through the loop of itself as well. As I pull it tighter you can see it catches around itself just like that. Then you can just start to tighten this. So you just do one side at a time a little bit. Tighten that one cord and then you can just start to tighten the other cord gradually. So I like to kind of pull where I just caught onto it with the other length. So pull one side tighter first and then you can take the long length and pull the rest of the cord tight and then you just need to kind of adjust it here in the middle make sure both sides are pulled nice and tight so we end up with something a bit like that now of course it doesn't look like a whole lot yet because this was just the first one that we made but then to make the next one I'm going to start from the other side so that means on the right side in this case but it's the exact same process so I'm going to take this length of cord put it underneath the first holding cord bring it back over the top of it and down through the loop of itself. So basically it's like a half hitch, but then as I've got this loop here, I'm gonna take it and flip it downwards towards myself and then just make sure it's laying over the top of the other holding cord. Take the end of the other length of cord, go down through the loop, but make sure we go down in between the two holding cords so we just catch that left one as well. 
and then also bring it out through the loop of itself here on the other side and pull it all the way through. So again, we end up with something like that. You can see that's what we had on the other side, but now it's just with the black one. Then you just can start out pulling this a bit tighter and then we're left with, in my case, the pink one here. So instead of just pulling the long end, I find it easier just to pull the first part. So kind of the first loop there coming from the original knot that we made before, tight first and then pull the long end through. And I also find that that makes the knots themselves a little bit tighter. So what I wanna do now is just kind of get my little ends back out on the top. And I'm just gonna undo that very first knot that we made where we attach the cords because we've just got started with the actual pattern and this one doesn't really fit with that. So we just undo that. And then we also need to make sure that we get the right size loop here for the button that we're using. I also wanna make sure to do this before I get too much further because right now it's easy enough to pull the holding cords through and basically make the loop tighter if we need to, or obviously make it larger if we need to, to make sure it's not too large or too small to fit the button. So this size is actually pretty perfect, but then I know this is the right size for the loop. And basically now I just wanna continue. So I'm gonna start on the left side because that's the next one I'm due to use. The way you can tell that as well is start with the side where the cord is coming out kind of towards the top. You can see here on the other side, we have a cord kind of looping over the top of them and then they're coming out underneath. You wanna start on the opposite side where the cord is coming out towards the top there. So take the cord, bring it underneath the first holding cord, back over the top of it and through the loop of itself. So we end up with kind of a six looping around the holding cord. And then remember to flip it towards yourself. Hold on to it, making sure it lays over the top of the other holding cord and then bring it all the way through. And this is where we then just need to tighten it. So I start by pulling this tight and then I pull the first part of the other side tight first of all. And then I grab the long end and just pull the rest of it tight. And you can see it tightens up the knot here. And this is now the first part of our next knot. So next I go to the right side because obviously we're starting on the opposite side then. And that's where my cord is coming out towards the top. Bring that cord underneath the holding cord, back over the top and through the loop of itself. Grab hold of that loop, flip it towards yourself. Make sure the loop lays over the top of the other holding cord. Grab the other length from the other side. Go down through the loop, making sure we catch the holding cord on that side as well. Bring it through the loop of itself and then just pull it all the way through. And then it's just a matter of tightening it. So just start with the side you're already on and then you can start to pull the other one tight just like this. And you can see we now have a second full knot in place. And this is basically how it's gonna keep working throughout, just making these knots underneath each other. And we're gonna get a really cool look of the pink on one side, in this case here obviously, and the black on the other. So just make however long a length that you need. So I now made the length that I want here and it looks a little something like that. And then on this end, we need to attach a button so we can obviously have a full clasp. So what I'm gonna do is straight away grab the two holding cords and just use both of them as if they were one. Then grab your button and then put both of the cords through the loop and the button in the same direction. And then make sure the button is facing the right way there. And then we need to take the working cords again and I'm gonna bring them down below the button. And now I just wanna make a regular square knot around both of the holding cords like that. And then when you tighten that, that's gonna tighten underneath the button there. And you can see on the back, it just gets captured in place. Now, of course we want this to be secure, so I'm gonna do the other half of the knot. But before I do that, I'm just gonna grab my glue and just get a little bit onto a toothpick. It doesn't have to be too much, just a bit. And then I just wanna put a little bit of glue on the holding cords here on both sides. And then we can just flip it back because by doing that, before we make the other half of the knot, we've added glue to what's basically gonna be inside of this final knot and that's gonna really help it adhere nicely. So then we just wanna make the other half of the knot, bring the cords around the holding cords there and then just pull this all the way up. Now what I'm then gonna do as well is just take a little bit more glue, again, not too much, and just put it on the outside of the knot and just mainly around where the cords are coming out from because obviously we do need to cut off the excess cord but we need to make sure that when we cut it off it's not gonna just unravel. And then I'm also gonna to get to the other end because don't forget we have these little ends from the beginning and we also, of course, need to cut them off. So I'm just gonna add just a little bit of glue around those ends as well. And then once we've done that, you just wanna leave this to dry before we cut anything off. And then all that's left to do is cut off the excess of the cord. So just take your scissors and just do one at a time. Just cut them off right where they're coming out from the knots. And of course, go around and cut all of them off. And then the final thing I like to do is just take a bit more glue and just put it right on the end of the cord that you cut off just to kind of seal that in place. And then again, let that dry. And otherwise, 
you have your bracelet finished and ready to wear. So that's how you make this two color unisex macrame bracelet. And these will be available for sale in my shop along with other jewelry kits and tutorials. So you can always support me that way. Or if you want to support me a different way, you can simply like, share and subscribe. And if you want to help me continue making these tutorials, there's also a super thanks button below the video. So otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.